Okay guys, back to work on this eggplant. This, this, this eggplant. And um, we're going to dive straight into the canopy. My, my, my. Now, the SR-71, like I was just watching Bernie's where he's got the canopy on zero where it's just a framework. But this one does seem to have some of the uh, aircraft skin there. I don't know where my pointer is. Anyway, so there is like one rib there. That's the type of thing that you can hand paint. But in a larger area, like this part here is window. And then that little square there is a window. But this area here is going to be, you know, you want to have it smooth with no brush strokes. And so you want to spray it. And uh, you're going to have a real hard, on something this small, now this is tiny, you're going to have trouble getting clean lines. So I'm going to be trying something that I tried a while ago, and it did not work. So let's do it again. So we are going to be using bare metal foil to do the masking. Now the big thing, as you can see, it, it pops right out there because it's so tiny, to, so thin, it can get down in there and... Um, do lines like that and so you're you're gonna I just basically pressed it on there and then the square showed up and so um, you cut it now just like bare metal foil like you know with the exacto knife and the, the trick is don't press it down too hard because you'll never get it off again and or not cleanly anyway so uh, the idea is to mm, leave it pretty much like it is there, uh, maybe a little more on the edges, and cut it off and spray it, and then cut the paint where there's going to be an edge, so cut this square out again with the X-Acto knife, and then remove the um, square. A dynamite on paper, last time I tried it it didn't work, <laughs> so let's try it again. Anyway, just wanted to get in here and show that before I went and did that painting. So, let's do that. Okay, and so there we go. It's, uh... Well, this is never going to work. Anyway, it's masked. Got a big wrinkle there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I hope this is going to work, but right off the bat, I don't know. Let's spray it, see what happens. Okay, so this is what we got. Now the first thing you might notice, it's not khaki. Well, what happened is the uh, can froze up on me, it all clogged up. I saw it coming, boy I get like uh, the base coat on and, and most of the uh, second coat, which is all the body took was two coats but it wasn't covering completely at the bottom so I needed that third coat didn't look good and the can, the can wouldn't work anymore so I had to make a quick decision um, the only thing I could think of was black so I went and got the black can and sprayed over the existing khaki and came up with this and now I'm hoping that uh, the masks come off and I mean, it's going to be khaki bird with a black top. This is getting silly. Anyway, let's uh, let's see if all this stuff comes off and what do we got. Okay, so here's where we're at. Now, don't jump to conclusions. Don't click away because uh, basically what you're seeing, you're seeing a rough edge. But it's because I didn't follow my own rules. Remember what I was saying? Is that you were going to have to cut the paint the same way you cut the bare metal foil. And you're basically going to have to cut um, the paint to the point where the uh, bare metal foil, the masking, and the paint come up with a clean edge. Of course, I didn't do that. I kind of started an edge and tried to pull it up like... Uh, like I would with tape, which also never really worked. You really should cut the edge on tape as well. 
Uh, so this is what you get. It didn't work very good. But on the other side, I followed the rules. And I cut the edge and then pulled the mask off. And we have a much cleaner edge. Now it might not look fantastic, but realize the scale that we're on here. That's some tiny, tiny stuff. And of course the big problem here, see how close I can get, you can see, like I was saying, I started painting with khaki and had to switch to black, and so through the cut and the mask, you can see some khaki showing through. And um, it just is what it is. I uh, don't know what to do forward on this point, but I think I've explained the process. There's going to be a lot of cleaning up that I do, and um, like over here, I will very likely take the X-Acto out again and try to cut the screwed up edges, and then touch up with just regular black paint, possibly a Sharpie. I don't know what I'm going to do. You, right there is night and day. See that? Pull it up without cutting, pull it up with cutting. Anyway, that's where we're at. And uh, I think it's a good process for for uh, masking and uh, masking tiny, tiny, tiny stuff that needs really super sharp edges. But you definitely, as I just clearly explained, you got to cut the edge before you pull the tape up, before you pull the mask up. Anyway, that's that. Moving on. And there we go. That's about as far as I'm going to go with it. Cleaned up the edge by recutting the edge, and I really did use a Sharpie. You can see down there in the corner for sure. But it at least matches the other side now. And that is that. Keeping in mind how small this is when you're looking at the whole plane. You know, it's going to kind of look there. Uh, it's going to be fine. Anyway, I have to wait for that to cure before I can handle that and get all the tape off the underside. And so at this point I'll go back to uh, working on the landing gear, getting all that on. And then we'll just put the canopy on and uh, put the decals on and there's... Oh yeah, the... Oh, well, maybe I'm not quite that far, but I think this should be the final episode. Okay, so this is what it looks like after it's been cleaned up. I did actually use a Sharpie. Let me see if I can get closer. I did actually use a Sharpie on parts of it. But that looks like with the glare there. Okay. And so, yeah, we got some khaki showing through. I think I had said before, this is just how you know that you've got a used, repainted SR-71 when you're at the dealership. Like if the paint inside the door jams doesn't match the paint on the outside, you know, you know somebody's been up to something. But anyway, I left the interior khaki. Uh, let me see, it's kind of not the good side. There we go. So I left the interior khaki, and look at the contrast. It's just great. You can see in there very well. And now on the inside... Whoa. 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 Let's see if I can get this off. There we go. On the inside, I have just painted the seat and what appeared to be headdress, but I don't know what those are. And that's about all I'm going to do with the interior. I don't think that they sell in a photo etch set for this. And I will clean up the um, extra paint that I got kind of dripped on the back of those headrests. And then I'll get the um, decal on the panel. And while I'm doing that, I'll probably just decal the whole thing. And we're getting close. After that, it's just landing gear. So let's do that. Okay, moving right along, um, I got to say these are really good high quality decals. They, um, 
and I'm, you know, it's a good thing that they were because that is a compound curve going around that egg shape. And they just sucked right onto there. Very, very, um, these decals, I had to get them really super wet, had to keep them swimming in water as I'm trying to move them around because otherwise they wouldn't move. They, they wanted to stick. Um, but, uh, real, real good decals. Real, really good. The, um, couldn't be happier. And so we are, this is where we're at. Uh, there, there's some on the belly. i got to be careful. The canopy doesn't fall off. Just a few on the belly that, uh, yeah, look at those. Interesting, huh? And that's it. Just wingtip decals and um, whatever those are. On the belly, but... Coming together good. Just have to um, land a gear to go, and we'll be set. So that's what I'll do now. Oh, right. And so here we go. Now this it seems like it only took a second, but man, what a pain in the neck. These um, landing gear for me is uh, the killjoy for, of airplanes. I mean, these, I mean, tiny, tiny, look at this. And get in tight there. Get the exacto in the seam. This is small stuff. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And to have to paint around the circle on something that small, or even just hold it and sand the seam off, um, that's not um, that's not model building happiness for me. And so that's one of the steps that you just kind of get through. And I got through it. it looks pretty good, you know. Um, kind of reminds me of a uh, real bird that way. Kind of like a bird's uh, foot. They did the triple wheels in the back. Just like the real SR-71. And it kind of resembles a bird's feet. It lo looks more like it when, when it's on its... Um, when it's uh, flipped over, you'll see. And so, yeah, I got the um, engines on there. The engine... Oh, uh, the ends of the engines, anyway. And what I did there... Let me... Uh, I painted in there flat tan. Because um, I was watching um, a thing on the engines, and that's ceramic in there. But it didn't look like white ceramic. So I went with kind of a tan ceramic. And then, of course, the um, the surrounding area is gunmetal. And, uh, you know, it's got a good look. Especially contrasting with the khaki. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's flip it over. So, here's the opportunity to show that I actually did put the um, panel decal in. And this will be the last time you see it, because I'm going to put the... Uh, cockpit on. Let me put that on there. And I will glue the cockpit on, but just see those little locator holes? I'm just going to put the one little tiny dab of glue in each one. Let me get this on there. So that if I ever needed to or wanted to get the uh, cockpit back off, there we go. I could do that. And so here we go. There it is, the SR-71 Khaki Bird. Let me see, no, can't really do the, um, maybe in the back. I'm going to say it kind of looks like bird's feet with the, uh, yeah, see there? With the triple wheels, kind of looks like triple toes of a bird. Kind of the odd markings on the bottom there. See that? The um, for a spy plane, that sure looks like. I don't know what those if they're lights or whatever on the bottom the belly. I don't know if um, it sure seems like whatever oh, oh, loose wheel. I don't know if that is uh, something that's going to give away its location. 
Uh, oh yeah, speaking, you know, so on the top of the canopy here, they do have one little tiny piece that you can glue on there, and I didn't put it on there, and I don't really, if I had done the studying before I had built this, I would have sanded that little uh, raised area there off, because I don't even see it on any of the pictures of the SR-71. I don't know what it is. My guess is it's some kind of a beacon light and nap light. But an airplane that goes Mach 3, you know, this is of course egg-shaped, but the real one, you don't want anything sticking up there going Mach 3. And, and it's not in the pictures, so I don't know why they put that on there, and so I'm not going to put it on there. Uh, and there we go. I did enjoy this quite a bit. We're going to do this again next year. From what I can see, it takes about a year to get it, to get an egg plane in the mail. So I'm going to start hunting down the uh, P-38, is the one I want to do for next year. And uh, we'll see if it takes a year to get one. But, there we go. Unusual thing. Oh yeah, one more thing. Let me show you what I did. There we go. So yeah, I just cut out one of those little center sections so that I could fit the plane in there. And as you can see, one carton of eggs, if you put them in sideways like this, will hold three egg planes. <laughs> now when you buy these things at the store, of course you want to, that's why they open, you, you want to open them up and make sure none of your egg planes are cracked. And you can take other egg planes from other cartons and kind of mix and match to get your even dozen three egg planes. So, we got positions for next year's P-38 and then the mystery of two years from now whatever other egg plane is going to go in there. Now I don't know exactly if I'll really display this in the case but I'll keep this egg carton out here in the shed just for these um, videos so that uh, hopefully one day in two more years this will be full of egg planes. <laughs> anyway, appreciate you watching everybody. Uh, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. I'm very, very much looking forward to doing it next year. And yes, Brian, next year's egg plane is going to be a fuchsia. It's going to be a fuchsia P38. Just in case this one wasn't sacrilegious enough. Uh, fuchsia P38. It's going to happen next year. Appreciate you watching, everybody. Y'all have a good one.